Hello, I'm John McAllister with the John McAllister Report. I cover a lot of different areas with Coach's Corner and one-on-ones and around the state, different things, and even dabble in Upper Sandusky, my hometown. But I'm going to talk with Tim Albin, the head football coach at Ohio University. We've been friends for a number of years, and I got to know him more through my good friend Jimmy Burrow and uh, had a good friendship, good relationship. I respect him tremendously as a head football coach. And he took over after Frankie Solich retired, I think three years in 21, 2021. Was it, and then he's been the head, gone into his fourth year. And uh, last year they won 10 victories. Well, the year before they had 10 victories and uh, never happened before at Ohio University. Today, Tim's going to talk about a lot of different areas from the, what the, how the spring went, how recruiting's going, uh, staff, all different kinds of things. The NIL, the transfer portal, just really interesting things. Two things before we go into the interview. One, the, his phone wasn't working real well and uh, had a different view of him than normally. And also, if you get a chance, press the button that says subscribe or like or make comments because I read all this stuff and I and the more, more uh, likes that I get, the value goes. Listen to head football coach at Ohio University, Tim Albin. Okay, today my guest, as I said earlier in my intro, is Coach Tim Albin from Ohio University, the head football coach, and I've known him quite a few years. I've known Jimmy Burrow longer than that, and uh, I I know they're good friends, and that concerns me a little bit. With, uh, <laughs> the company you keep. Coach Albin, how are you? Just, just fine. Uh, th- thanks for having me on, John. I want to go first. Look at this cup right here. Can you see that? Oh, yeah, I love that. Great. That's, that's a, that says Grandpa. Well, my kids got it for ordering us. <laughs> that's I great. Have a grandpa, but not hopefully not my grandkids. That's funny you say that. My daughter is expecting her first child and uh, in October, and uh, my cup's going to – they're going to call me Grumpa because I'm grumpy. <laughs> I'm grumpy all the time. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, that'll change. <laughs> That'll change. Coach, let's talk about the last season for a minute. You guys, I saw the the Iowa State game. And tell John, I went down there with, I was neutral. Because <laughs> Matt Campbell's a good friend of mine. And Johnny, John and you guys are all good friends of mine. And so I, that was a great game. Yeah, it was. I tell you, we, we play, you know, it's, there are days where, it, it kind of go kind of kind of goes your way. Uh, we, we played basically flawless. Uh, we had um, a, a couple of key stats in that game. We had uh, zero sacks, uh, uh, zero turnovers, uh, zero drops, uh, zero penalties. Yeah. And Iowa State had a penalty. Uh, it, you know, we played obviously unbelievable defense. Right. And 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 then and then did not beat ourselves in the game and we cannot come out on top. It's just one of those, one of those, one of those days, that it, you know, the ball went our way. I agree with you totally, but let's take some credit. Now you, I was on the sidelines. So you guys made some pretty good plays. Now you guys made some pretty good calls. It's not like you didn't go into that game, not scouting Iowa state. That's okay. Yeah. Like I, 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 appreciate, earlier, I appreciate those, I appreciate that, you know. And, and those guys are good friends of mine, and John and all those guys. But still, you guys did a good job in that game. Yeah, the, yeah, everything went kind of went your way in a way. But you also made some really good calls. 
And uh, okay, the last season, ten and three total. Yes, sir. Uh, then, you who, know who, that's back to uh, back to back seasons with ten wins. That's uh, never been done in school history. Uh, we have um, won won five straight bowl games. Uh, you know, I don't. That's that's something that's never been done here, of course. And it's a, I think it's up there pretty high with the with with our conference. In the Mid American Conference, and when the last last school to do that, I'm not sure who that was, but it's been a while. So you know, we got a lot of momentum uh, headed into the into the summer. Co- coaching, you got a class program. Let's cut to the chase. You know, you've got yourself. You've got really good coaches. I mean, class coaches. And I, I'm going to look down here. You said someplace I read. I do my homework that you hope. You're loving coaching rather than living coaching. That's right. That is correct. And I think that's such a great comment. And I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to use that. I'm going to plagiarize you and use that. But I think, and I even think it's, as I was reading it, it's more just as important for players. You know, do you love it or do you just want to live it and play it? I mean, you got to love it. <laughs> yeah, no, you you do. It's, a, it's the, this is the most the game of football is it teaches so many life lessons oh. and um, you, it, to, 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 it, it's a, it's a team effort now, you know, if, I mean, if you want to be about you and individually, well, you need to go do one of those, you know, get on a skateboard, go play golf, you know, do the golf thing, you know, get, it's just you and your, you and your, or you and your, your bike, those guys that yeah. do those bike, those bikes and do all those flips. Hey, it's you and your bike. If there's a, <laughs> if, there, if there's a, if, if there's a, uh, an issue. It's just you and the bike, you know, mm-hmm. and, and football is a different, different game, but right. the, totally. the, the time commitment that, that it takes to, uh, as a player and a coach, um, you got to do it for, for a loving, not, not a living for sure. Right. For sure. Okay. Let's talk about spring practice. Did you come out of there pretty healthy? Yeah, we did. Um, we held out, I think we held out three starters in the, in the uh, offensive line due to, due to some minor surgeries they had at, right. at postseason. Uh, we made, a, a, I think a, uh, developed a lot of depth in the in the offensive line. Uh, Parker Navarro, quarterback wise, uh, had a solid bowl game. We're looking forward to his uh, uh, senior season and leadership. Of course, I'll stick with I'll stick with offense on on spring practice. Uh, uh, Ricky Hunt, MVP of the of the Myrtle Beach Bowl, uh, had had a good spring. I think we're going to be as deep in the running back room as we ever have, and we've been pretty. We've we've had some really really good depth in that in that room, and then it's going to be one of our best groups. That's um, really good. Uh, defensively, we were turning we were turning up pieces with Bradley Weaver, uh, Braylon Henderson, um, um, Shea Taylor started in the bowl game at linebacker. Adonis Williams, Austin Brawley, uh, uh, Roman Perotti. There's enough pieces in there. Uh, I think to have a solid unit. Now, hey, are we going to be the fourth rated defense in the country again? We'll we'll see. It'll be tough to to probably top that. We're going to miss the two linebackers uh, that would that get graduated. And uh, but but I I'm I'm, I'm certainly excited. Uh, as you know, every season's a new season. Right. Uh, but our kids are certainly hungry. All uh, right, and you yeah, it's a big time, great place to play. Okay, let's talk. Let's get away from all that garbage now. Let's talk about real stuff. Uh-oh. But I wanted to cover that. First of all, tell me a, just in a minute your 1981 Pontiac Trans Am. <laughs> Jeez. Oh I'm yeah. Looking at things about you, and I see this interview, and you're riding around in a. Just can't take me a ride in it. You realize I'm. Uh, I think almost 15 years older than you, 16. So I remember those days. Yeah, okay. I tell you, I, I appreciate I appreciate you asking asking that. It's it's really something I'm very proud of. <laughs> it was it, it was it was um, um, it, it wasn't my first car. My first car was a '65 Dodge pickup. No, okay. Uh, three on three on the tree, or what do they used to say? But um, the, um, I got I bought that car in high school, my sophomore year. In 1982, and it's a night like you said, it's a 1981, and my, my mom and I split it. I paid like nine thousand dollars for it. I have the bill of sales to this day. I drove <laughs> it all through high school, all through college, which was five years, and all through grad school, which was which was three. And I finally got a I full, finally got a full time job, and it, I could, where I could afford an, an, a used car. Couldn't afford a new one uh, as, my, as my first coaching job paid twenty thousand dollars. All right. And I was an, o- I was the OC at the school, but, um, 
Uh, anyway, it's time to get a new car. The trade-in person, hey, I'll give you five hundred dollars or a thousand, and I said, mm, no thanks. And so I I I, par I parked that that uh, Trans Am in my mom's uh, horse barn, kept the mice out of it, and uh, saved money for twenty three saved money for twenty two or twenty three years. Finally, I got enough money to to, to restore it. And uh, started it up, drove it, put it on a trailer. <laughs> uh, it's been about ten months to get in the engine work, and about fifteen months to get the body the body work done. That's and good. It only I only drive it on a sunny day, and the t tops <laughs> have not been on it since for twenty years. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to your coaching background. You know, people can read that stuff, but the one thing I want to make. I, you coached at uh, North Dakota State for one year, didn't you? Now, yes, here's, sir. My, here's my comment, though. I saw them play YSU, and I've seen South Dakota, I think it was, play. That's a great league, and that's a great program. Yeah, yes, sir, it is. Uh, the, they got a, they got a, an unbelievable, very passionate fan, fan base. Wow. Uh, you know, the, the tradition and the history is – I mean, it, it's, it's second to none. And then and the, and the, you mentioned their league. Their league uh, conference that, that, that they play in, it's the SEC of FCS. You know, I mean, that's sure. the SEC of the, the FCS. Sure. And uh, I just, again, the fan base is unbelievable. You go out in, in the community, you go to the mall, you go out in a restaurant, people are coming up, talking to you. I mean, they just really, really love uh, the Bison. That's I'm so impressed with that program. And I wanted to mention them. Okay, uh, let's talk about let's talk about uh, the portal for just a little bit. That Tim, that you can talk about because I will tell you, we talked before. I think college football is broken. It may not only be broken; it may be smashed a little bit. And that's my. And I've been around this stuff for thirty over thirty years, so I'm not. I'm not some young sports writer trying to make a name for myself. And I think high school football is coming behind that a little bit. I, I see them making changes, and I don't know if it's all for the good. <clears throat> oh, tell me about your perception of the transfer portal. Yeah. And go, and go slowly. Yeah. And, you carefully. Can. and carefully. Right. Well, I, I you know, it's, it, it's, um, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot, John, as, as right. everyone knows, you know, it's not, it's, it, let me say, start by saying this. It's not the, it's not the athlete's fault that they, they didn't, they didn't make the rules, right. you know, the adults in the room are behind, you know, the rules and how, how it's structured right now. And so uh, you can't, no one can be upset with the, with the, with the, with, with these athletes and what's, what you're seeing. Uh, I'm hey, I'm all for capitalism. I, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm for it you know, get what you earn, all those things. Um, but there's got to have, there's got to be legislation. We've got a, a part NFL model. I mean, it's, it, we're in an NFL model, an NFL model right now, but we have no salary cap and there's no tampering charges. All right. I mean, I'm that that's, you can start with that. And, and uh, you know, how, how, how we, we're not going to fix it here on this podcast in, in 20 minute call, No, I know. Uh, but, but uh, we all know the problems. Uh, the, 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 but you can't, you can't be upset with the kids. Uh, and, and so they, they've, they've got to get some, uh, rules and some legislation in place so you can make maneuvers on your roster. Managing, a, managing right. a roster right now is almost, it's just very, very difficult. Right. I think too is you can't blame the kids, but you can blame college coaches for poaching. You can blame. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. No. I. Yes, yeah, sir. I. I'm not. I'm not gonna. Uh, yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna disagree with you on that, John. I. And then the yeah. other thing, at least in the pros, they sign contracts. Yep. That's right. That's you right. I mean, that's right. I mean, that's you know. I know you and I aren't going to change anything. I just wanted, and it's so hard. A guy like me will say, oh, "Boy, be." I tell a high school player not. You know, got to be careful. You know, you all want to go to Ohio State, Michigan, Notre Dame. But, you know, be careful. If you just want to be on the team, okay, the go. I had a parent, you know, they had a chance to go to a walk-on in a big university a few years ago, and he had a scholarship to Kent State. 
and I said, what on her phone? She called me. I said, what does your son want? To, does he really want to play football? And then she said, well, yeah, he does. I said, well, you know, you can go some places and you can wear the outfits. Your parents can walk around. You can be a preferred walk on, which means you you're there the first day. and The second day you're a walk on, you know, and right. uh, so it worries me a little bit because I'm a kid's guy. Okay, let's talk about the and you can't say too much, and I realize that. Uh, tell me about the NIL. Right. Well, the, the NIL is a, gr a great thing, and um, you know that's that is something to be honest with you, John. I, in my in my my personal opinion, they should have done a long, long time ago. I agree. You know, I mean, for you, you know, you you know, you know all the things. You know, I mean, from you know, Joe Burr, how many? How many Joe Burrow jerseys have been sold? Was sold to LSU. Yeah. You know how many Braxton Miller jerseys were sold, right? Yeah. There's, there's, there's. We can go back, go on and on and on about that. But so I'm excited about the NIL and what it stands for. Yeah. Uh, athletes have a chance to go out and establish themselves, right? Work, work on their brand, present themselves, right? Oh, and 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 earn and earn some yeah. some some monies, yeah. you know, or or some product, you know, yeah. off of name, image, likeness. And so I think it's a positive thing, yeah. and it, but it's led into the, it's, it's, you know, you got, you got NIL and you got collective collectives. Yeah. All yeah. right. And so they're two different things. And, uh, it's the collective, the collective piece of this is as a spinoff of NIL. And, um, again, repeating myself here, they've got, they, they just got to get legislation uh, under right. control. You know, I think I agree with you. I agree. Uh, we talked about let's, Let's see what are I'm in time. Okay, I want to get do one more thing, and then I want to talk about. I want you to answer some questions for me about Tim album. Tell me, Coach, are they really going to try to do away with walk-ons? Again, um, this I just, I just, I, I, you know, I, I, I probably read the, some of the same articles or, read, yeah. or some things that I mean, the same things that you have read, yeah. and um, I just don't know. Um, I know that's that's been talked about as as you just brought up. Um, you know, is it got is it is it involved? Is Title Nine involved in this because of that? And okay. you know, I just don't know. Okay. Uh, um, I just you know, I certainly hope not. I, I certainly hope that they don't they don't go down that road because um, it take we're taking away if they do that they're going to be taking away opportunities for 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 students. Right. You know, and right. that that are life changing. You know. Right. And so I, I understand I, I'm all for title nine. I'm all for it, yeah. you know, and, and uh, I just, football is so different than the other sports. And, and I don't how to, and I could, I think I, to be honest with you, I could fix it, but not, not behind this desk. I need yeah. to be behind the desk, you know, yeah. somewhere else, you know, at the Capitol or something like that. Yeah, then somebody would run you in the court, Tim. And uh, yeah, right. they'd run you in the court and uh, that would be good. Okay. Let's talk about. I put this up here. You, you, Tim, the football coach. Okay, what what aspects of coaching football do you enjoy the most? I, without without question, it's the players. You know, um, I, I, um, I just I love being around them. I've thoroughly enjoyed being the head coach from the standpoint of getting to know the entire team. I mean, I, I know everybody's birthday. They get a text from from Tim Alvin. Yeah. You know, I I know what's going on in their personal lives. You know, we put this not only myself, but the staff. You just you pour all the love and support into these guys, and and then when you have when you have those those intense game day, get on their tails, yeah. demanding moments. Right. They run they run through a brick wall because they know that they care about you. That's why that's why I enjoy the most. And uh, I don't I, I I don't mind the recruiting piece. I like that too. I like the administration administrator things because. It's it, it breaks up the it breaks up the practice piece, you right. know, and so it just kind of a never ending cycle where I, can, I stay fresh. Okay, and you mentioned recruiting. What do you? I'm 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 a parent bringing my son in to see you. What do you look for in recruits? Right, right. you know, I think that you know it's it's a vetting process. Obviously, it starts with film, and then it goes to game field. What's the what's the athlete doing? When he doesn't have the ball in his hand, what's he doing? When, what's what's he do the next play after after he gives up the sack, or gets a penalty? 
you know, is he on special teams? Oh, you know, so okay, true. okay, then it's, you, that, that you start with that. We all know the head coach is gonna is gonna t- t- give his his thoughts on his kids, and it's gonna be mostly it's gonna be positive almost all the time. <laughs> you know, you talk to the strength coach, you talk to the English teacher, you talk to his counselor, you talk to the custodian. Mm-hmm. How is he? You know, and just and see what they're saying about it. How how is he? You know, walking down the hall. You know, and how you know how's he? How does he talk to his mom? You know, I think there's a, there's a lot that goes into it. You know, uh, because you you know at, at the end of the day, um, you want you want great character. I mean, talent is like talent is the floor. Character sets the ceiling. You, you know, know, coach, that's such an often used cliche, but it's so true. Yeah, it's yeah. so true. And uh, the one thing I would tell you, and <clears throat> When I get a running back on now on film, I say, try to ask ask your coach if you can be on the kickoff team sometime. I said, because <coughs> now people don't believe this, but there are actually running backs and there are some in Ohio. They don't want to get hit. I mean, now they say, oh, that they don't want to get hit. But now if you put them on defense and stuff, they love to hit. And guys tell me I'm crazy, but that's true. If no, you that's... do a good, if you do a good job as an evaluator, you can tell those kids that don't. I mean, they'll they'll run and they'll do this, but down deep they don't want to get hit. Right, so, right. Well, they'll hit you. Oh, so <laughs> it's really good. What's the biggest challenge, coach, for athletes today? Let's mm. spread it out to athletes. What's the biggest challenge? Yeah. Um you know that this uh, the social media stuff is just it's 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 it's, it's so intense and it's so intense it takes a lot, a lot of their time they've got to be disciplined and and uh, i'm going to still i'm going to steal something from joe burrow you know you know train in private you know and i i really like what he said about training in private you know yeah. and and uh i just think there's 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 just so many so many distractions that that they have in front of them at this day and age that I didn't have to go through, you know, yeah, I mean, if it, you know, if, if my phone didn't ring or I, or I, if I didn't buy the USA today, I just didn't know. <laughs> I mean, you, you, know, well, I you mean, don't have to worry about that now. <laughs> no, that's right. You know, so there's just so many distractions. So it's, there's so many more things for them to do to occupy their time. Yeah. And, and, uh, and depending on what, how they're, what they're, what the content of it is, I think it has an effect on it, you know? So that's why I, I love the game of football. It is a team thing. And uh, um, so, so I, I, hopefully I answered your question there. But that's, that's my thoughts on it. No, that's really good. I uh, And the funny thing is uh, Mark Pantoni up at Ohio State, this is a couple of years ago before they changed the rule back. He said a lot of kids will come in and the first thing they ask is, when you're doing the photo shoot, the photo shoots, you remember when they did all yeah. those? And so yeah. he said, those, that's the first question they'll ask and stuff. But, and I, you know, I understand I'm 75 years old. I'm a kid's guy, but you still have to put some kind of limits on it. Right. You still have to, and you still have to play football. That's a, that's the best thing. And okay. Uh, what was, just a few more questions. How you've kind of answered it, but how important is the athlete's public image? Yeah, how I think important? it's. I think it's. I think it's very important. You know, I mean, image is. You know, that's what. And that's what. That's what people think of you. All right, but you know, we 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 work so hard on the character piece, which I mentioned earlier. Right. You know, that's who you really are. But I. But I will tell you, we have uh, guest speakers. We have GMs come in and talk to our team about, uh, the, you know, before the draft and what yeah. they, they look at, they look at TikTok, they look at Snapchat, they look mm-hmm. at Twitter, you know, but, and, and, and go through those things. And it's all part of, it's part of the NFL's vetting process on who they're drafting, you know, whether it be image or the, the character piece. I mean, they do their homework. And so I, I think it's a thing that you, that we have to continue as a society to educate the, the athlete, the student athlete you know, on how, how important that piece is. That's a 27 hour a day job to do that. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. Tim? Yeah. Yes, sir. And, uh, okay. What, two more questions. What's the best piece of advice 
about coaching that you have gotten? What would somebody tell you? You got Frankie Solis down there. You got Jimmy Burrow. You got uh, oh, the offensive coordinator. It slips my mind right now. Those are younger guys. But what's something? Uh, Frankie's not, but what? He's older than me. But uh, what piece of advice have you gotten as a I coach? Think, you know, I, I think that probably just, you know, thinking about it is something pretty short and sweet is you, you got to you coach them hard but you love them harder. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's that, and I'm, that's another way of saying what I said about po just pouring care and love into these guys. And they give so much back. It's just, Hey, you, you coach them hard, but you love them harder as a, as a pretty good little short thing that I think, you know, speaks volumes to how we operate here and why yeah. our kids play so hard. I think you saw it firsthand against the Iowa state game. Yeah. You know, we didn't, cause you look in pregame, they, you know, they were much bigger than we were, yeah. you know, but our kids fought and, and found a way to get it Don't done. Don't forget now, Coach. <laughs> Haycock and, and Campbell and all those guys are good friends of mine. <laughs> so I, know. Yeah. I, I won't send this to them. <laughs> all right, super. I, I, I agree. I'm just joking around with you. Okay, let's talk. We're just about finished. Great interview. Tell me about the camps. Promote your camp for me, the Ohio University football camp. You bet. Um, we Hey, we are. For, um, again, this will be my 20th season coming up. And, you know, with and we've always have one camp. It's always the first um, uh, early in June. I played the first camp this year is June 2nd. And uh, we, we have about, I don't know, 275 to 300 kids every year with exception of the COVID. You know, and we had we were getting new turf here a couple of years ago. But we had, right. you know, had a, had a camp last summer. It was very successful. And we've added, I, I share that with you, we've added a second camp um, towards the middle of June. I think it's June 15th. Okay. And so this will be the first time in my time here that we've had two. You know, the NCAA allows us to have 10, 10 days for camps, and we're going to use two of those 10 days uh, here on our campus. I just think our facilities where we are, we got a lot to, well, a lot to show athletes, you know, and um, uh, it's beautiful here, the buildings and all those things. But we have great resources here um, for, for the student athlete. Brand new training room, getting remodeled, et cetera, et cetera. But um, you're going to get a chance to work with the best staff in the country. I truly believe that in the bottom of my heart. And um, it'll be a great experience uh, uh, for the student athlete. That's really good. And I've been there a few times over the years. And, boy, you do get quite a handful of kids. Yes, sir. Now everybody's kind of catching up with you. But I think you were one of the first ones. For a long time, I mean, in their you know, everybody's doing it now, but and that was always a good camp to start with, right? It's, it's well run, you know. I'm a critical camp guy, how they're run and everything. And yours sure sounds good, okay? Well, coach, I really appreciate you doing this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my brain here to see if anything else, but uh, I think we're good, and uh, okay. I really appreciate I know you're busy. I appreciate you taking the time to do this for me. Thanks a All lot, right. Coach. John, Thanks. I appreciate it. And I know I, you know, we talked, we texted back and forth about a month ago or so. And I, hey, but my world blew up when we lost, you know, lost Spence and and our strength guy left, went to UCLA, you know, mm -hmm. and then the portal, you know, what I mentioned earlier on the coming out of spring ball and then we lost five starters. So it has been, it's been nonstop. Uh, and so I apologize for not getting back to you sooner. Boy, I'm, glad that you, I'm glad that you reached out again. And, um, you know, if we can ever do anything, John, anything at all, you, you, you got my number. You shoot me a text. Yeah. Well, we kind of slid by it there at the end and talked about it earlier about losing five starters to the portal. So probably right now is a tough time to ask you about the portal. But but we did earlier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Coach, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, John. Have a great weekend. Thank you.